perspective now from CNN political analyst Josh Rogan. He's a columnist with The Washington Post and also the author of Chaos Under Heaven, Trump, Xi, and the Battle for the 21st Century. Josh, I do want to ask you about uh, China's role in all of this, but let's start with uh, something you wrote in The Washington Post this week, that the United States has forgotten the lessons of Russia's 2008 invasion of Georgia, saying, quote, Putin understands only the language of security risk and reward. Showing military strength in a calculated way can get him to back down. Taking such moves off the table for fear of provoking him leads only to more aggression. Uh, Josh, as we question how effective sanctions imposed by the West might be, uh, is there anything other than hard power, than military force, that might cause Putin to de-escalate? Well, Boris, to be clear, there's nobody right now calling for U.S. troops or NATO troops to be on the ground in the middle of the war in Ukraine. But what I wrote, and I, the reason I wrote this was because I interviewed the president of Georgia in 2008 who fought against Russian troops, Misha Saakashvili, who's imprisoned in Georgia. I did the interview in his prison, through prison. He passed his notes through his lawyer to me. And what he said was, you don't actually have to get into a war with Russia, but you do have to show strength in a military way. And what they did in 2008 was they, George W. Bush flew U.S. Air Force planes into Tbilisi and left them there, and Russia backed down. Now, that's not an exact analogy to what's happening today, but the point is that the Biden administration is offering money and they're offering diplomatic support and sanctions, but nothing on the security side that Putin would understand or respond to. And therefore, we shouldn't be surprised that Putin doesn't care about the sanctions. We shouldn't be surprised that he's not intimidated by the threat of cutting off the Russian banks. You know, that's not going to stop him. We have to do more. Of course, the Ukrainians are begging for us to do more, and Zelensky is begging us for, do more, to, for us to do more. You make a really compelling uh, case in the piece that uh, Vladimir Putin has been building up to this for some time uh, in the way that he's acted uh, in Syria, for example. Uh, he's been accused of committing war crimes there for the better part of a decade, in Georgia as well, in other parts of the world. But notably, I, I want to get your thoughts on this, something that Senator Marco Rubio posted on Twitter late last night about the Russian leader. He says that something is off with Vladimir Putin and that it would be a mistake to think that Putin would act the same way he did five years ago. Do you think something is different about Vladimir Putin now? Right. I mean, you don't have to be a psychoanalyst to understand that Putin is getting worse, that his actions are getting more reckless, more bloody, more evil. And that's clear because of what we see on our TV screens. The Syria example is really relevant here because in 2015, when the Russians started killing Syrian civilians, they were doing it a few at a time. And seven years later in 2022, they're doing it dozens or hundreds at a time. They're testing weapons in Syria, uh, chemical weapons, phosphorus weapons. Uh, they're hitting hospitals, they're hitting schools. And right now we see that in Kiev, all of a sudden, we see that as the military advances, as they face resistance, they've started to target civilians. They're bringing the weapons and the brutality and the murderous, gruesome tactics that they honed in Syria and in Georgia and in Ukraine in 2014 to Kiev today. And I think the point that everyone who's faced uh, Russian uh, um, army destruction has made to me over the last few weeks is, uh, yeah, this is only getting worse. So what do you expect when you let Putin uh, have his way in Syria, yeah, he's going to think that he can have his way in Ukraine. And the results of that are bloody and awful. And that leads you to only one conclusion, that maybe we should stand up to him and do more. Uh, and Josh, uh, let's get to China, because for the most part, they have uh, leaned into Russian talking points about security issues in Ukraine. They abstained on the UN Security Council when it came to, to condemning the Russian action in Ukraine. And yet, overnight, there were indications in Russian media that the regime wanted a, a slowdown. They didn't want the situation to, to get out of control. Uh, help us understand, is this a, a legitimate shift, do you think, in China after seeing some of the images we've been seeing in Ukraine the last couple of days? Well, I think what's going on in Beijing is very clear, actually. Uh, it's not in China's interest to have a war in Ukraine. It's not in China's interest to have energy prices spike. It's not in China's interest to have a precedent that one country can attack another country because they supposedly have a foreign policy based on non-intervention and respect for sovereignty. At the same time, 
uh, Xi Jinping is best friends with frenemies, rather, with Vladimir Putin. So they're stuck. They can't be for it. They can't be against it. They don't like it. They can't oppose it. It just shows you that China is playing zero role on the world, world stage, despite professing to be a world leader, despite professing to be for multilateralism and peace and all that. Uh, when push comes to shove, they will side with their dictator buddies uh, because murderous dictator thugs stick together. And because in the end, it's a, really a battle of dictatorships versus free and open societies. So Russia's on and China are on the same side. That's not our side. That's the other side. And they mean us harm. And that for them trumps any sort of ideology uh, or any sort of interest. It's just as simple as that. They think they're against us, so they're against us. And we have, just have to be honest about that. And you can bet that folks in Taiwan are, are watching those two frenemies very closely to see how the West will respond to them, uh, given the implications for what could come down the road. Uh, Josh Rogan, thanks so much. As always, appreciate Absolutely. the conversation. Thank you, Josh.